of our Chrysler PCM uh, cloning and VIN editing um, exercise where I'm going to show you the procedure to first we're just going to clone um, one module to another. Now if this is the first time you've watched one of our videos I'm going to go ahead and set up the programming unit just so you see how that's done. So just bring the programming unit down here and we have it. I uh, have the um, communicating uh, communication cable routed at the back, so it's not uh, causing us to uh, lose any uh, screen real estate here. But anyway, um, here it is. What's shown in the lid here are instructions that uh, we provide. If you choose to uh, cut them out and put them in the lid when you purchase a kit, you can do that. Otherwise, you don't need to. Here's your power connector. Uh, here's the power pack for the programming unit. This is one reason we're able to do um, successful work within circuit programming is because we don't use USB to power the programmer because USB limits your current. So I'm going to plug in the power pack into a regular old AC outlet and you can see that the AC power light is lit and we are now ready to start the software. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the computer to which this is connected which is a uh, Panasonic Toughbook CF31 and we have it connected with an express card for speed and also it lets us run if we choose to do that. May, I may do that in the next part of the video. Um, run without Windows. So we have always uh, maintained we will not be, our products will not be tied to Microsoft. Uh, we can be Microsoft compatible but we're not going to uh, strap ourselves to the back of the uh, the great white whale of Redmond to be uh, dragged along with uh, an infinite number of uh, Windows updates, upgrades, versions, and everything else that comes along with uh, being tied to Microsoft. So we work with Microsoft, but we also work without Microsoft. So anyway, um, here is the computer screen. And in order to uh, start our software, we have um, is the correct pointing device here. The EEPROM Plus icon is on the desktop and I'm just going to double click it and our software is going to start and the first thing you see is a device selection table. If you've watched our other videos you know what this is. This is where you pick the part with which you are working. Um, I'm just going to go over some things quickly here if you haven't uh, seen this before. Our product uh, supports memory devices that are go back in time to when Jimmy Carter was president. You as an automotive technician uh, aren't interested in those but people that do service on uh, older equipment, video games, industrial controls, things like that are. So we're going to be working with uh, EE proms or as I call them double E proms today so I'll show you something. Um, we're just going to page down these are all the different devices that we support and you'll notice that we don't make you uh, know who made the part. We use what are called core part numbers. So when you're staring at the little teeny weeny part and um, you can't figure out who made it, well we don't care. Okay, we use protocols which are uh, compatible with all the different manufacturers. So uh, all you have to do is uh, choose the uh, core part number and um, you'll be uh, ready to go once you set it up when the system. Alright, well in the previous video we identified the uh, of the part number on the PCM as a 25320. Okay, well here we have the uh, Serial EEPROMS 24 series. Here we have the 25 series. Okay, so right over here I, I'm going to move the, uh, the selector with um, the arrow keys and there's the, the 25320. Okay, if this is what you want to do, one way to do it, if you want to search through all the part numbers visually, you can, but you don't have to. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do this. We'll press enter and it will select the part. And the next thing that you see um, down here, the programming unit is set up with a, with a dip switch. All right. So we use the dip switch simply because they're reliable and uh, they do what they need to do and um, allows us to uh, manufacture a product which uh, goes far back in time. 
So your dip switch, this is the dip switch. And if you look back at the uh, the uh, settings, you can see we have switches 2, 3, and 5 are up and the rest are down. And then over here, uh, you'll see that the software says requires adapter, ASCRSM1A or ASCREE2. Okay. Um, that adapter is installed into the programming unit, and I'll show you that in a second, and it says plug or device position center 25XX. Okay, well, here's the programming unit, here's the adapter, you lift the handle on the zero insertion force socket, this has to be left justified, so you put it in there all the way to the left, and you release the handle, and now this is locked in place. Also, if you go back and look here, it tells you dip switch settings. Okay, there's a switch on the adapter and it says set one down, two and three up, and four down. Okay, so we go back to the overhead and you'll see that uh, we have the, uh, the dip switch set one down, two and three up, and four down. All right, and it said device position center. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using the clip. All right. And here is the clip right here. And this goes over the top of the, the EE prong. And here is the opposite end of the clip cable, and it goes to device position center. And you'll notice that we say on the adapter, brown wire on the right, brown wire on the right. These are not keyed. Okay, so when you put it on, be sure the brown wire is on the right. So we're going to put the brown, the plug on the center position and push down. And we are now ready to uh, connect to the, uh, the EE prom with the, um, with the clip. All right, so let's go back to the computer display and I'm gonna hit the space bar and, or any other key and that will um, clear the information display. All right, so next we are going to uh, connect to our modules. We're going to uh, attach the clip to the EEPROM on, first of all, our, our source module, our, our defective uh, PCM, and then we're going to copy the data into um, our target. Okay, here are our PCMs. I marked these so that it would be easy to follow. The top one is the original one. This is the defective one. Uh, at least we've assigned that as its role as defective in this uh, demonstration. And the bottom one is the Mark Salvage. Okay, this would be the one that uh, was that you removed from the salvage vehicle. And what you want to do, uh, in order to uh, be able to um, complete your repair task, is to copy the data from the uh, defective module into the salvage module. All right. So let's take the lids off again. I, if you watched our previous video, you know I had to undo all of the, the little tabs in order to get the get access to the circuitry. And I've also marked these uh, so we can keep the circuit assembly straight. This says uh, failed original, and this one says salvage vehicle. Okay, well, in order to do this, the first thing that we want to do is uh, connect to the uh, EE prom, the double E prom, on the failed module. Okay, well, if you watch the uh, part one of the video, the double uh, E prom is right here. Okay, so let's move this out of the way since we're not going to be uh, needing it. And we're going to pull this down here. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see the EE prom. And then I'm going to attach the clip. Okay, sometimes the clip doesn't want to attach easily okay you have to line it up make sure it's little jaws uh, it's got little separators that uh, are in between all of the, uh, the the little brass fingers and they have to go in between the legs on the EEPROM and um, you have to get it lined up right so I'm not going to ha watch have you watch me struggle to get it on there just in case it doesn't go as smoothly as, uh, as I would like in the demonstration so after I get it attached um, basically, you, you just hold it in your hand, and you squeeze it, and you put it down over the top of the, of the chip, and you release it, and it holds. So let me get it attached, and we'll be right back. 
Okay, well, before I put the clip on, I wanted to show you something else. People will ask, how do you know how to put the clip on the part? Clearly, it could go on two ways. Um, and what we do on our, the clips that we provide, there's a, a red dot that we put right here, and that indicates pin one. And if you want to know where pin one is on the part, there are uh, two ways to know. One is there will be a little dimple in the part, okay, in the corner, which indicates pin one. Sometimes they will... Um, Put a mark, uh, a silk screen mark on the on the circuit assembly where pin one is. In this case, this part does not have that. This part has what's called a slanted side, meaning that when the pins come out of the part, uh, one side goes straight down and the other side has a little angle to it. All right. Well, um, I'm not going to get down close enough with the camera to show you, but the slanted side is the the side closest to the edge of the uh, the circuit assembly. Okay. And if you take the part with the slanted side and you orient the slanted side, if it, if it was vertical, um, the upper left-hand corner is pin 1. Okay, so the dot on the part is going to be placed on pin 1. Okay, there's the dot. Pin 1 is here. So let me put the clip on. Okay, the clip is now on the part. And I've scooted this down a little bit so you can see it. And um, go back to the computer and read the part. So here's how, here's how you do that. We're going to go back to the, uh, the screen. We're going to use the buffer editor to read the part. All right. Basically the way that our system works, it's real straightforward. Down here uh, it says select command and you, you operate it by pressing uh, one of the command numbers. Okay. Well, up here where it says command list, uh, that's why it says command list because these are all the commands that you can do from the uh, the primary screen. Okay, well we could do command 3 which is read device into buffer. Okay, the buffer is a block of memory where you can do detailed work. I'm not going to go over that uh, in great detail in this presentation. But we're going to access the buffer editor which is right here. That's command 5 so we'll press 5 and that switches to this screen. Okay, um, the reason this screen is all F's is that each location on the screen represents a single byte and an empty byte, basically a uh, uh, an, an empty memory cell, um, is all ones. And in hexadecimal, all ones are FF. They'll, they'll appear as an FF. Okay, and you learn all about that in our training video. Over here on this side, where all these dots are, all these periods, this is where human readable information shows up. Okay, this is hexadecimal data over here. This is human readable information over here. What is human readable information? Something like the VIN. All right. So, a lot of times people will say, well, how do I remember what all the commands are in the buffer editor? I'll just show you this so you know. Um, if you look down here, it says enter editor command. All right. Escape to exit, meaning you press the escape key or question mark for commands. So, if I press the question mark key, here's a summary of all of the commands in the buffer editor. It's uh, kind of concentrated, but they're all there. And there are multiple pages, so you can see what all the things are you can do in the buffer editor. All right, and if we go down here and look right here, command G is get valid data. Okay, and I'll read you what it says. Read data from device, then compares. Okay, and what we want to do is, is exactly that. We want to read the information from the EEPROM and then after it's read, we want to read it again. All right, because when you're working with parts in circuit, there are certain things that can happen that will prevent you from having a successful read. All right, so the, the, the G command, the get valid data command, um, allows you to be confident that the information that you, uh, you uh, read from the, the double EEPROM is indeed valid. All right, you can do a command three if you choose, but there's no guarantee that you actually had uh, got a good read. Okay, so press escape to get out of the uh, the command summary screen. Now I'm just going to press G and watch what happens. Reading data in the buffer, comparing data with buffer. Let's get read it a second time. And when it's done in green, green is good, red is bad. Part and buffer match. Data indicates valid. Press any key to continue. Okay, so we have just read the information from the EEPROM in this PCM and it is now in the system buffer. All right, so I'm going to hit a key here. We're going to clear that. And while we're here, 
I want to show you this. Look right up here in the upper right hand corner is the VIN. This is the VIN number stored in this module, okay, in this EEPROM. This is the thing that prevents you from um, using a used used module or salvage module because this VIN is already programmed. All right. So now we have uh, read the information from this EEPROM and it's in the buffer. So what's the next thing that we need to do? Well, we're just going to do a simple clone. So we're going to attach uh, our uh, salvage module and write this data into it. So let's get the salvage module and we'll do that. Okay, let's disconnect the clip from our defective module. Get our salvage module. See, I've labeled the salvage vehicle. And now I'm going to take the clip and attach it to the salvage vehicle. All right, we have the clip attached to the EEPROM in the salvage vehicle module. All right, we we'll flip back to the computer screen. There's the original data from the defective module. Now, I'm going to show you a, a trick, uh, something that you can do, because when you put the clip on the, um, when you move the clip from your uh, your defective module over to your salvage module, how do you know that you actually got a good connection or you're actually connected to the EEPROM in the part or in the module? Okay, well, we have a, a command in the buffer editor called Quick View. And what Quick View does, see, we don't want to disturb the data that's in the buffer because we want that to go into the EEPROM in the, uh, the salvage module. But we would like to know for sure that we're connected to the part. So if we put the clip on and you press Q for Quick View. And what will happen is the data, oops, press the right Q key, quick view. There's the data from the, the salvage vehicle module. And if you look in the upper right hand corner there, that's a different bin. So let's press the space bar. Now this, this data that you're looking at now, it's not in the buffer, it's just on the screen. So that lets you know, yes, I'm hooked to the part. There's the VIN from the salvage vehicle. There's the VIN from the defective vehicle. All right, this is in the buffer, this data. This data is just on the screen. So we know we're hooked to the part, all right? Well, what do we do now? Well, all we gotta do is program the part. So let's do that. How do we do that, okay? Well, I'm gonna exit out of the editor and I'm going to go back to the main command list. And if you look right here, there's a command, command 2, which is program device from buffer. All right. Well, you can do this in the buffer or you can do it outside of the buffer. All right. Well, let's go back to the buffer editor and just do it from inside the, from the buffer. So we'll press 5 to go back to the buffer editor. We will press 2. And it says program from buffer start address zero yes or no yes let's program all right and if you watch you'll see it's programming it's counting down now one of the things that we do is after it programs the, the device after it programs the data into the double EEPROM it will turn around then it will compare to be sure that we had a successful programming procedure and it if everything is correct all the bytes match it will come back and say programming complete data verification is correct. All right, at this point, you're done. You disconnect your clip, you put your module back together, and you go and you install it in the car. And there, it's just that simple. Okay, the next thing that I want to show you is how to do a VIN edit. A VIN edit is where you go in and you just change the VIN. You don't uh, copy all of the information in the EEPROM. We're just going to edit the information in the VIN. And you, this works with any, any module. If you want to uh, work with like key data, if you're a locksmith or whatever, the editing uh, 
editing procedure is is the same all right but what I'm going to do I'm going to do this with the system and I'm going to do it outside of Windows so give me a minute and um, I'll get that set up all right in order to show you how a system works outside of Windows um, I have the entire uh, Andromeda Research EEPROM Plus system on this. This is a bootable USB drive. Um, and one of the unique features of what we sell is that this will let you run the system without Windows, without Microsoft. It works just like it does under Windows, but you don't need Windows. So the way that this works is you insert this into the uh, USB port on your uh, your host machine and then you reboot it and it boots from this instead of booting from your hard drive and uh, from that point you can then go ahead and perform uh, whatever operation you choose um, including reading loading saving and all of that uh, directly from this without uh, any involvement from Microsoft so let me insert this into the computer and we'll start it up and you can see it work Okay, I have inserted the USB key into the, uh, the computer and I'm going to turn the computer on. And what will happen is when the computer starts, you'll see the Panasonic splash screen. Sometimes the video gets confused. The video subsystem gets confused like it is there where it shows you two blocks of, of text. Then it straightens itself out. And if you do not make a select an option at the top, it says select startup option. It will automatically choose option one for you. So I'm just going to let it go and have it choose option one. And it'll come up and say the program unit is not responding because it does not know where the programming unit is. Okay, so we have a uh, an option if the programming unit is not located where you can have our software search the I/O range of your computer for the programmer. And to do that, you press S. And so we press S, finds the programming unit, and again you're presented with the device selection table. Now previously I went down through all the different categories until we found the uh, EEPROM uh, category which had the 25 series parts in it. But an easier way is to let the computer do the searching for you. So we're going to type 25320 and press enter. And there we have the same configuration information which we saw under the uh, in the Windows demonstration. So I'm not going to do uh, go through that again. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, give me a moment, and we will uh, hook the clip up to a module, and we'll edit the vent. Okay, here we have the clip hooked to the vent. I've lifted up the circuit assembly so you can see it um, attached there, the way that the clip basically uh, goes over the top of the part and then you release it and it uh, it stays in place. Um, if you reach a point with these clips and they, they do wear, uh, if you want to maximize the life of your clip, be sure that you don't press down on the on basically center over the part, press down because you'll distort the little plastic uh, uh, separators which are between the gold little bronze fingers. Uh, make sure the clip goes over the part, it goes into the plastic separators go in between the legs and uh, then release it and it'll hold okay the other thing that I will tell you is in some cases not this module but some modules will have a humidity sealant on them and if they have a humidity sealant sprayed onto the components you're going to have to clean that off because if the humidity sealant is there and you're using the clip um, the clip may not make good contact this is also if you use the AccuTouch probe um, that's not as big a problem. Okay, so got the clip on the part, and next thing we're going to do, let's go back to the uh, the computer. Again, we're going to select Command Five. We're going to press G. I'm going to read the data into the buffer and wait for it to confirm. And there's the data. And again, as I said before, in the top right hand corner, there's the VIN. All right. Well, let's say that we wanted to edit that VIN. All right. Well, let's change the 17-digit uh, value. And what I'm, I mean, you could re-enter all 17 digits if you wanted to do that. But let's say you only wanted to edit the last uh, six. Okay. 
Well, there's a command in the buffer editor called modify. And again, I'll go flip over to the, the command summary screen. And, and if you look almost at the bottom where it says uh, modify buffer, you enter an address that you want to modify, and then you go over there and you change it. So, all right, so I'm going to get out of the command summary screen, and I'm going to press M for modify. All right, and it wants to know where in the buffer you want to modify. All right, well, let's just say modify address zero, which would be there at the uh, the first location. So modify zero, and then we're going to press enter. Well, what do you see? Okay, there's a a uh, reverse cursor that appears at address zero. And if you want, you could just type in hexadecimal codes that uh, would represent the characters that you want to edit in the bin. Well, it's not very easy to do that, not very friendly. So we use the arrow keys and we'll move over to the last six digit location. First digit there is a seven. But if you look down in the lower right hand corner, it says entry base equals hex. Tab to change. All right, so I'm going to press the tab key and we're going to change it to ASCII. All right, ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange, means that you can directly type from the keys on the keyboard into the buffer. All right, so we will change this VIN to uh, 33, three, I'm just making this up, 2210. All right, so now that VIN has been changed. Okay, now. What if all you wanted to do was write that VIN and nothing else into the module? Okay, well, our software has a command, again, it's in the command summary, called write. And what the write command does, it lets you specify a specific range of addresses in the buffer where you can write. And you, we're going to do that, press escape to get out of the modify command, and we're going to say press W for write. Write data from buffer into device. All right. Well, let's just do it. Let's do the whole VIN. So we'll write from zero, all right, device address zero, to device address one zero. All right. I'll tell you what, let's, um, let me explain to you what I, why that is. All right. Let's go back to the modify command. Don't want you to be confused. Here's address zero zero enter like we were doing the modify and if you look at the top of the upper left hand corner that's the edit window um, and we're still in ASCII and as I move it over each one of these uh, positions is an address within the buffer okay so where we are at address D address E so these are hexadecimal address F and this is address one zero okay so that's the last digit of the VIN so we're going to write from address zero which is up here to address one zero here and that will replace the entire VIN with what we changed it to. All right, so we're going to use the write command to do that. So let's do that by saying write again from address 0 to address 10, starting at address 0. Okay, so we're telling it to start in de at device address 0, end at device address 10, and start at buffer address 0. So watch, we press enter. Program complete data verified correct. Okay, so now the data that was previously in the um, that location in the module has been changed to the new VIN. It's literally that simple to uh, to edit a VIN. So I wanted to uh, show you that, make you aware of that, as to uh, how easy it is. If all you want to do is modify the VIN in the module, you read it, you find it, you uh, go in with the modify command and change it to whatever you want it to be and then you can use the write command if you wanted to you could program the all of the data from the buffer into it but I just wanted to show you the write command and how that works all right so uh, that is that and again we were we did this outside of Windows running from the bootable USB key uh, so um, that pretty much wraps up um, this part of the uh, part two of the um, cloning and VIN editing of uh, this particular module and modules from uh, from Chrysler. So uh, uh, 
Hopefully you have uh, gained some information, you've seen the system work, you understand how the system works, and you can understand the flexibility that once you understand EEPROM work, what you're able to do. So, uh, as before, um, if you have any, any questions or uh, you would like to discuss um, our products with us and what uh, they can do for you, or um, if you like this kind of content, we would encourage you to subscribe. Although we're not in this for uh, not trying to monetize our channel, we just uh, we have new things that you would be interested in. Uh, we would ask you to subscribe. So uh, again, we appreciate you uh, you watching, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, we would appreciate uh, you contacting us. And uh, as always, we thank you for the time that you've spent uh, watching our videos. And you can uh, get information from our website at arlabs.com.